Electric cars have very low drag coefficients. For example, the Tesla Model S comes in at around 0.21 and the Mercedes-Benz EQS comes in at around 0.2. That is far more efficient than many of their combustion rivals, which typically hover around the 0.26 mark. But why? Why are they so much more efficient? In this video, we simulated a surprising electric vehicle, the MG MG4, to find out. The MG4 is fully electric and is very different to the cars MG is traditionally known for. It actually looks good. And one of your amigos who wanted us to tell you he is from Indonesia commissioned us to simulate this car at 100 miles per hour. It is also lowered 20 millimeters. If you'd like us to simulate your very own car, let us know here. Its drag coefficient came in at just a 0.28, which is very good for a hatchback. Usually they hover more around the 0.3 mark. But being an EV car, it's not surprising that it's very low. But why? Well, like most electric cars, there are two reasons. The first reason why the drag coefficient is so low is that it has much less of something called cooling drag. This is the drag a car incurs when the air from outside goes into the car to cool it down. Electric cars have less cooling flow and hence less cooling drag. The MG4 is no different. While that is a very simple reason why the MG4 and electric cars in general have low drag coefficients, the second reason isn't so simple. That reason is because the manufacturers designed them so that they can go further on one charge. That actually led their shapes to become lower drag too. And this is one time where aerodynamics is boosted to even rival the aesthetic design, which is rare. Let's see how MG made this car low drag. This is a plane slicing through down the middle of the car and it shows the velocity in meters per second. The lines show the flow's direction in this plane. Now, looking at the front, it might seem bad. I mean, in many of our other videos, I go on and on about how having this flow at the front slamming into it raises the pressure there, which we also get, and then that high pressure pushes the car back and that increases the drag. Well, believe it or not, that's actually better than letting more of the air go inside the car to cool it down. This is actually a lower drag alternative. But while that may be so, MG went even further. Looking at the front, it might seem big. But if we look closer, the actual front face, which is the vertical bit, is actually really small, literally just this little bit here. And if you look at it in real life, it might not seem that impressive. But with this velocity field, we can now see just how impressive it really is. Contrasting the speed of the flow over the flat section compared to just a little higher up, shows how different the flow responds to these two different sections of the geometry. The front is blue, which means the flow coming in has decelerated like crazy. It's almost stationary now. As a result, it has dumped almost all its kinetic energy into the car and lost it. That's really bad for drag. On the other hand, looking just above that, the flow is 40 meters per second, 50 meters per second fast still. It still has all its kinetic energy from upstream, really. That tells us that this region hasn't lost any of it, or at least very little of it. Looking at the pressure, it even goes negative, this blue region. That means that the car is even being sucked forward here. That's amazing. So MG cleverly rounded this front, which blends the front into the hood, and by doing that, they guide the flow very well. And they still gain the necessary depth in the engine bay for all the mechanical stuff you need. It's a very clever design and one that dramatically reduces the drag the front typically creates. If we shift over to the left half a meter, we still get a similar thing going on, but it isn't as severe. The front is a little bigger, but because we're closer to the edge of the car, the oncoming air can flow around the sides of the car more easily. That reduces how much it has to decelerate. So the trick of making the front small and blending the hood into it is most effective at the center of the car. But while the front and top are good, MG fell into the underbody trap. In the center plane underneath, we can see how the flow separates around this little lip. There's this then swirling region, and in the drag orbit, this region has quite a bit of drag forming. If we move over half a meter to the left, we don't get as a severe reaction from the flow going underneath the front lip, but this is still one, and a little bit of drag too. Why does that happen? Well, the simple reason is that the front lip is too sharp. Comparing this lip with the lip from the Audi SQ5 we saw last week, we can see a stark difference. Last week, that lip definitely wasn't sharp, 
it was chamfered and that will allow the flow to travel over it much more easily. This one by contrast is as sharp as a knife and so the flow has to separate over it. An easy way to fix this is to simply round the underneath of the lip. It would be difficult to notice it because it would be underneath a car, but it would still give the flow a more curved surface to flow over. So this is a bad region for the MG4. If we move to where the hood meets the windshield, this region is very impressive. You can see how the flow only slightly decelerates, and honestly, this region is very small too. What that tells us is that the flow isn't being manipulated too much here, and that means that its kinetic energy isn't being taxed too much either. While the front lip was worse than the Audi SQ5, this region is much better than the Audi SQ5. We can tell without even looking at the pressure plot that the high pressure we usually get on the windshield here won't be as severe. And looking at the pressure plot, that's exactly what we see. There is high pressure still, but it's not that high and it only occupies less than half the windshield. The top half has low pressure and that is very good for low drag again. What that means is that we don't have this air pushing back on the car. And in the left plane, it's even better. More of this windshield has low pressure, this blue region. So the majority of the windshield is actually being sucked forwards by this low pressure. And that's very good for drag reduction. But how did MG achieve this trick? Well, it's mostly just because they angled the hood with the windshield quite well. That reduced the angle between the two, and as such, the flow traveling over the hood when it meets the windshield doesn't slam right into it. Instead, it can flow over it more seamlessly. And for me, this is awesome to see because I've talked about this idea so many times and how so many different cars don't do this. So it's really cool to see MG having done it. When we come to the roof, we see something very, very interesting. The flow does accelerate, but look at how small the boundary layer is over the roof, this thin green line. It's really hard to see, and that's exactly what I mean. It's so thin. This is great overall, firstly because it means that the free stream flow isn't affected so much. And secondly, because as we make our way over to the rear spoiler, the rear spoiler now has so much more energy to work with, it's faster moving flow. Now, while this very good condition is produced for the rear spoiler, the rear spoiler itself is just okay. In this center plane, which actually slices between the two halves of the rear spoiler, we still get a pretty big wake. It's hard to tell why this is happening here, so let's move to these streamlines, which we've done to show how the flow around the rear spoiler behaves. Now we see what the problem is. MG put this little brake light here, which is fine for those who use brakes, wusses, but the way the brake is integrated into the car is bad for aerodynamics. It creates sharp edges, which makes the flow separate over it, and a large wake is created. As a result, the rear window is covered in bad flow and that increases the drag. To give you an idea as to how damaging this little feature is, if it was smooth and the brake light were integrated more into the car or, or just shot out, the flow in this channel would remain attached here and flow down the rear window much more. That would reduce the wake size and hence the drag. Here though, it just separates and really for no good reason. So this part is quite bad. But what about the cool rear spoilers? I really like the design and in the streamline orbit, we can see that these streamlines over the top of the car flow underneath them. So at the very least, they are catching the air and using it. But if we look at the right one underneath, the streamlines seem a little wobbly. That suggests that some flow separation is occurring here. But let's look at this left plane with the velocity plotted to get a better idea. Now we see the problem. The flow over the top is pretty good, it's directed down, but the flow underneath is just bad. You can see how disordered it is, it's awake, and it is very slow flow too. So as much as I don't like saying it, this rear spoiler is very bad for drag. We can also see in this drag orbit that a lot of drag is being produced, all this red region, and that's just not great. The problem with the rear spoiler is that they are very blunt at the front. Because they are so blunt, the oncoming air hits them, gets thrown down, and then it struggles to reattach to the bottom surface, that then leads to a wake. The rest of the rear spoiler is fine from a drag point of view though. As such, the way to fix this rear spoiler design is to round the front edge of it. That will make them more airfoil shaped, and the flow will remain attached over it, instead of creating a wake and high drag. 
I'm really disappointed by it though. It looks so good and could be, but it isn't. It's really unbelievable that it's almost hard to believe. Let's move on. Now the rear wake is where the MG4 shines. It's a hatchback and traveling at 100 miles per hour, but look how small its wake is. It's really good and that inherently comes with low drag too. MG achieved this by having the float over the roof shoot down. It could be shot down better, but let's not revisit that. And then the float underneath the car shoots up a little too. Honestly, I'm pretty surprised by this flow because the diffuser is almost non-existent, but still the flow is directed up a little. And the surprising thing is that if it had a proper diffuser, like one from a Golf GTI for example, this wake would be even smaller, and the drag coefficient would be even lower. So there are a few things on this car that could be easily improved to drop that drag coefficient. But that was the center plane. If we go to the left plane, now we see something awesome. Look at the rear window. Its wake is almost nothing. The flow from around the sides of the car whips in and then takes up all this space. That reduces the wake size and the drag here. That region alone dramatically drops the drag coefficient. Then coupling that with the rest of the reel, this is very impressive. In fact, I'm not sure what I'm more impressed with, the rear window or the float under the diffuser. Just look at how little weight from the rear wheels there is. To give an idea of how good this region is compared to many other cars, a couple of weeks ago we saw the luxury car, the Genesis G90, produce really bad rear wheel wakes, which then just bum rushed into the diffuser region and spoiled its flow. Here we get none of that. That also reduces the drag coefficient. But why does that happen? Well, honestly, I don't know why. If you look at this plane, which is a horizontal plane, 20 centimeters off the ground, the rear wheels do produce wakes, but they don't flow inwards. It might be because the wheels are fairly narrow and that naturally reduces the wake size, that helps. But if you look at the pressure plot here, it could be also because the pressure underneath the middle section isn't any different to behind the wheels, as such the wakes from the wheels don't get sucked into this region. That could be the case too. And if so, adding a more aggressive diffuser, like the one from the Golf GTI, would mean that these wakes would get sucked in more and the diffuser's efficiency would drop a little. But that could be fixed with better strikes too. Anyway, in this plane, we see the rear wheels are pretty decent. The wakes are small, and while these wheels do produce drag, it's still very good. And that's even more impressive considering that these wheels have very open rims. Open rims are just bad for drag. But still, these wheels just power on. These rear wheels might be the most impressive part of the car. Literally, the only thing I'd do here is just put on more covered rims and that would drop the drag coefficient by another 5 or 10 counts. But for the wheelhouse, there is one other thing that could be done. If we look at this plane, which is 60 centimeters off the ground, we can see that behind the rear wheels, the flow separates and the wake starts quite far upstream. That just means the wake is larger and we do get more drag here. While the rear wheels are very, very good, I would be tempted to put a little vents in the rear fender, but I wouldn't necessarily link them to the wheelhouse. That is definitely the most common thing to do, but here, I'm not sure if that would be a good idea or not. The reason I say that is because the rear wheelhouse flows are already very good. We can see that not much flow is coming from them. So maybe the vents would help, maybe not. I'd be more tempted actually to turn the vents into guide vanes, where hopefully some of the flow upstream would be caught, funneled through, and help reduce the wake size a little. That would also bring the flow closer to the car and reduce the amount of flow separation around the rear edge. So there are a couple of options here. The traditional rear wheelhouse vent or this less common guide vane. Anyway, overall, the rear wheels are very good for drag. The front wheels, not so much. Back in this plane 20 centimeters off the ground, the front wheels have huge wakes that just blow out too. That's because the oncoming flow is so angled and the flow separates around the tire shoulder. Stopping that separation from happening is still a mystery. And in this drag orbit, we can see just how much drag is produced from them. They are definitely the worst part of the car. But there's another drag producing region here too. There's a streak of drag produced over the middle of the wheel. That has a lot to do with the rim and spokes. They just churn the flow up. Now in this plane, we see how the front vents perform. MG put these vents at the front to grab some of the air flowing over the front and use that to shield the wheels a little. 
The second part, the shielding is okay, not great, but okay. But where these vents really shine is how well they capture the flow. Zooming in, we can see that the flow entering this region gets caught and doesn't trip over the vent edge and create a wake. It's surprising how often that happens, but here, the vent captures the flow very well and that's because it's angled very well. It's aligned with the flow. Moving up to A sims of the ground, we see how the flatness of the MG's body really helps the flow just travel down unhindered. There's no wake along the sides and the flow separates at the rear edges predictably. That helps reduce the drag. So MG incorporated this good aerodynamic design with aesthetics. That's hard to do because this flat design can come off as a little dodgy, but MG did a very good job styling it. But one thing that could really be improved upon along the sides is just how much some of the flow whips up. The streamline orbit shows how flow from the doors shoot up over the roof. It's really weird. We can see that flow evolving through the planes from one meter up to 1.35 meters. It seems like the side mirrors, which produce a lot of drag by the way, create persistent wakes that shoot up. So the mirrors could use some work here. Overall, the MG4 produces very little drag for being a hatchback. That's because it's electric. But while it does that, it also falls into the same trap that most electric vehicles fall into. Its low drag design creates a lot of lift. At 100 miles per hour, 51 kilos of it, about as much as a couple of buffalo wings. Most electric cars have adopted a very similar approach to their styling, they're sleek. That creates a wing shape, which naturally produces lift. The MG is no different. The surprising thing though is, MG managed to make that happen for the hatchback too. Usually the rear of a hatchback is just sawn off and the wake is somewhat chaotic. Here, it definitely has a very downward trend. That means it produces a lot of lift here. On top of that, the diffuser is very minor. This region is one of the few around the car that can produce good downforce, but because it isn't very big, it doesn't. Making it bigger and more aggressive would increase downforce here. And if done well, it would also reduce the drag coefficient. So this region should really be focused on more. Another region that can produce good downforce is the front lip. We do actually get that here because the pressure is low, but as we saw, that came with some drag. If you want to produce more downforce here, it would be better to extend the lip forwards more into a splitter plate. They've done that on the racing variant. What this does is produce a very large surface area with a high pressure on top to push down. And then underneath that, the low pressure sucks down too. Overall, that produces good downforce. Then circling back to the rear spoiler, if you really want to produce downforce, this spoiler needs to be changed. Currently, it does a decent job directing the flow downwards, which helps reduce the drag and actually produces lift. So to produce downforce, it needs to be flicked up more. One region on the car that produces a lot of lift, but can't really be helped is the hood. It's angled like a wedge and that creates a lot of low pressure over it and that sucks the car up. The only real way to fix this is a major redesign though. The underneath needs to be a wedge shape too, but then that exposes the front wheels more and that creates more drag. So really the sides need to droop down to cover them more. These simulations were done with open foam and power view. If you'd like to learn them, then check out our courses here. Overall, the MG4 is very impressive. Its aerodynamics are great for a company that doesn't really have much experience with electric cars. One car that isn't so great though, and from a company that has a lot of aerodynamic experience, is the BMW M2 here. Peace out amigos.